Hey, New Hope, happy Memorial Weekend. I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that this weekend is filled with more than just barbecues, yard work, house projects, getting out the boat or the camper, but I hope that this weekend you take some time to remember and think about those who have served our country and some that have even given the ultimate sacrifice of giving up their lives so that you and I can worship together. Speaking of that, it was so great to see so many faces this morning at church as we gathered together for the first time in nearly two months, over two months. And uh, so I'm just super thankful that we're able to do that again. And tonight I'm going to be just kind of going off of this topic of remembering. And for me, I feel like I have really struggled to remember what life was like before this whole COVID thing started. Now, uh, I don't know that I'm one of those people who have absolutely hated uh, this this COVID um, change of life because quite honestly, I've gotten to spend more evenings with, with my family than I ever have. Uh, there's a lot of different responsibilities that have kind of um, popped up and they're new and uh, challenging in that way, but there's a lot of uh, responsibilities that that would eat up my evenings and so I'm thankful for that but I, I just think back and I try to remember what life was like before this whole COVID thing broke out and I, I think of going to the library and um, my wife on Tuesdays would take the kids to the library for story time uh, at the Grimes Library. I think of going to the Science Center and how I just did not like the ball wall room where it was just absolute craziness and I felt like I was going to lose a child and how I miss that now and I'm like would be totally okay with losing a child not really um I think back to the zoo and when the zoo was open uh I think back to church you know uh just even just having full capacity and Wednesday nights and Sunday school and just taking for granted all the things such as just uh, being able to give someone a hug and, and not be shamed for that. And uh, I think back um, and remember my parents uh, babysitting for me. I think back of eating in restaurants and, and uh, when toilet paper wasn't worth uh, as much as gold was worth. And uh, there's just so many different things that I'm trying to remember. And uh, I think that in uh, general, humans do not do a good job at remembering. And, and we have a little bit of selective uh, memory and humans tend to forget. Um, you know, I think of the phrase that history repeats itself. Well, why does history repeat itself? Well, it's mainly because we forget. We forget the dumb decisions. We, we choose to ignore the past consequences of yesterday's mistakes. And uh, we, we just choose not to remember. Um, I, I think that most of you have gone through a time in your life that has been extremely difficult. And in the moment, that pain was so real and acute and, and just present that you weren't sure how you're going to get through it. And maybe it was a diagnosis. Maybe it was cancer. Maybe it was a loss of a loved one. Maybe it was uh, marital issues. Maybe it was the loss of a job. And as you're going through that season of life, you feel like nothing is going to get you out. But then you get the new job. The marriage gets better. Um, you get healed. You know, uh, you move on in whatever capacity and we tend to forget because we choose not to remember going through a difficult season or maybe life was really, really good. And um, we don't take the appropriate time to remember all the blessings that God has given us and all the different things that God um, has provided for us and the blessing of, of his presence in our life. Uh, and so memory can keep us in uh, the past um, in a bad way, but it also can launch us forward into a, a future. Uh, and and uh, so tonight I'm going to be challenging you to remember 
and we're gonna dive into that. I'm gonna try to keep things short tonight. I know it's a holiday weekend, uh, and I'm so looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, speaking of the zoo earlier, uh, the zoo is now open, uh, I think for members and my family. Uh, we get a uh, family pass every year and we're gonna go we scheduled an appointment to go to the zoo tomorrow and so i'm looking forward to that but as i stop talking about the zoo uh, why don't you turn in your bibles to deuteronomy chapter 8. this is uh where the uh, israelites are being warned not to forget their time in exile and uh, Israel was captive in Egypt, as many of you know, and Pharaoh was very oppressive. And he spent a lot of time and energy making their lives miserable. And then they wandered in the, the wilderness for 40 years and uh, they saw many miraculous things. And the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter eight encourages them to remember what has happened. So I'm going to read uh, verses 8 uh, or chapter 8 verses 1 through the first part of 7. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Now, I, uh, I think that the Lord is asking uh, us a very similar request today as he did um, the Israelites when this was written. Uh, but I want to ask the question, why would the Lord ask the Israelites to remember and I think there's three uh, different reasons and there's many more than just three but three reasons that I want to highlight and the first one is to remind them of lessons learned in the desert I think so often we run from the desert we don't want to wade in the desert we don't want to be in the desert when in reality in the desert sometimes we see the most miraculous things we see water coming from rocks we see manna falling from heaven we see all sorts of miracles that happen in the desert. We see the manifestation of God's presence in the desert. We see uh, God speaking things to us in the desert. Um, and uh, we learn a lot and often grow more in the desert than we do in times of ease and in comfort. Um, uh, we, we see that God provides for us in the desert and we also see that God provides us the ability to endure in the desert. You know, I think oftentimes we pray and, and we pray and ask God to remove a thorn from our side or, or to get us through a time when in reality the answer to that prayer is Him giving us the strength to endure through our situ situation. Um, I think other lessons in the desert might be uh, what not to repeat. So maybe uh, we are in a desert season or we're in a difficult situation because we've done something to lead us into that difficult situation. And the Lord is saying, hey, I want you to remember Remember the lessons that you learned. Remember that when I asked you to go and take captive the promised land, I promised you that to do that and to obey me and not to run in fear, just as the Israelites did not take uh, Joshua and Caleb's advice and, and they ran and then they wandered. And, and that's a lesson to learn in the desert. So I think that's the first thing that... Uh, why the Lord would ask the Israelites to remember. The second thing is so that we can receive peace now. So um, as many of you have experienced 
uh, struggles and trials in in uh, your life, I think that a, a, a big reason why we can have peace today is because we look back and see God's faithfulness then. We see that God was faithful then, that he was leading us through, that he was providing the things that we needed. And because of all those things, we can trust him today and we know that he's um, for us, he's with us, and he's doing something good. And I think that we've talked a lot about that over the past two months. And it's not just this cliche, feel good thing to say. It's not um, just to, to ease someone's mind. This is a reality that God was faithful and he is faithful. And therefore, we can have peace and you can have peace. And if you do not have peace, then I encourage you to ask God to enter your heart, to fill you with his peace and with his spirit, because he is the person of peace and he has made himself available to us if we would just simply humble ourselves and invite him by his spirit to live in and for us. And so uh, the second reason why God would ask us to remember things is that we might receive peace in the now. And the third is that we might praise him because he is just simply good. We look back, we see how God has worked, we see how he was faithful, and what that should do is lead to a response of praise. I find it hard to understand how someone can gather in God's church and not sing songs of praise and not lift their hands in praise and, and not um, just have a natural response of praise because of all the goodness of God. With every breath that I have, I'm going to sing how good he is. And every opportunity that I have to tell others about how good my God is, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it loud and I'm going to do it um, in an expressive way where there's no doubt in anyone's mind who's watching, who's encountering it, that they would know that the reason why I do this is because God is good. And so I believe that the Lord has us remember to lead us to a place of praise. And God loves to hear that on his ears. It's like sweet, sweet music um, to his ears. And, and he, there's nothing more than he wants to hear than your praise to him. And so tonight, I just want to challenge you to remember. I want to challenge you to remember the good. I want to challenge you to remember the bad. I want to challenge you to remember all of the lessons learned during this COVID time. Uh, remember the lessons uh, such as that God and his church is important. And many of you are missing church when in quite reality, you're only there once every four weeks. Um, and others of you are, are, are refocusing in on your families and you're spending more time with your families and you'd been distracted with your work or side occupation or your hobbies or whatever. God wants you to remember this time and remember how you've recalibrated, how you've realigned your priorities so that you don't slip into uh, climbing the wrong ladder, so to speak. And, and God wants you to remember the lessons learned in, in the distance. God wants uh, you to remember to slow down and, and that you can encounter him in your house and that that worshiping in your house and praying with your family and, and doing daily devotions is something that we should be doing. And so God wants you to remember the lessons that you've learned. Maybe you've gone, gone through a difficult time financially, maybe relationally, whatever it might be during this time uh, of this COVID crisis. God wants you to remember the lessons that you've learned. And hopefully you've received peace um, at this point. Hopefully you've received peace that God is watching out for you, that he's protecting you, that he loves you. And uh, I just want you to remember how God has been faithful to you. How has God been faithful? Has he kept you healthy? Has he kept you fed? Has he provided for you in unique ways? How has the Lord provided and been faithful and shown himself faithful to you? That way you can have peace in the future. And the last thing is that I hope 
that you will take this time as you look back on God's faithfulness and his goodness, that it would lead you to a posture of praise, not just um, on your lips, but in your expressions and the way that you live your life. And uh, I know that that is his desire. And I pray that tonight would be a challenge for you. I pray that we would spend time uh, remembering what God has done so that it would bring peace to us, but also it would bring praise to his ears. So let me pray for you. Uh, Jesus, I thank you so much for everyone who is watching. I pray that they would experience your presence and your wholeness and your healing, Lord. I pray, God, that, that you would just begin to speak to our hearts and you would remind us of things and times in our life where you've been faithful and remind us of times in our life where maybe we've been unfaithful, but your faithfulness still uh, was right there with us, Lord. And, and I just pray that it would lead us into a deeper relationship with you, God. And I, I pray, Lord, um, as we uh, just close out tonight, that, that we would um, bring you glory, bring you praise, and that our praise would ever be on our lips. And uh, just thank you so much for everyone who is watching. Again, we thank you for the freedom to uh, meet and to assemble and to gather. And I pray that you would keep people safe as we do that and give us wisdom and how to do that. And uh, just bless everyone as uh, we sign off here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. May he keep you. And may his face shine upon you. Take care.